So we have Ben with us today, uh, atheist stroke agnostic. Yeah, more agnostic, I'd say. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my name's Khaled. Do check out my happiness course at bigquestionsanswer.com in the description or the p p pinned comment. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, why, how we know God exists. I'm going to talk about some ideas. You don't have to agree, but it'll be interesting to see what you say. But before I talk about that, it's like, why does it even matter in the first place? And there's a lot of things that... So when I talk about things, I don't talk about just... I'm a Muslim, but uh, I appreciate that people are not going to just listen to anything I say because I'm a Muslim and the Quran says, right? So I talk about what a lot of people don't know in terms of how psychologists generally agree, have long known that believing in God is very good for your mental health. And I, that's what I'm gonna start with quickly, yeah? So first of all, um, why do we need to believe in God? It gives you meaning in life, right? So let me explain that a little bit. So Viktor Frankl, one of the greatest psychologists of all time, you know, have you heard of the name? Man's book, yeah. Cool, okay, uh, what, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by yeah. Fantastic, right? Um, so he says that God is a super meaning, or the super meaning if you use his words exactly. Do you, have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. Right, so we think we can live meaningless lives. We're told on, not let's say me and you necessarily, but where it's been advertised to us through Hollywood movies, like, um, what was it, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and things like that, that we don't need meaning. And they make fun of the idea that we need meaning. And atheists and all sorts of other groups have tried to sell us to the idea that we don't need meaning in, in our lives. And the result is we're, we're the most depressed society ever, right? Society is just getting worse and worse, all sorts of other issues. So we need meaning in our lives, but also people who have accepted Islam, especially when I say I jumped the gun to Islam, because Islam is uh, one. One is the it's the only logical religion that's 100 percent in line with science, etc. So I'm kind of jumping the gun, and we. I know I'm going all over the place, right? Um, but yeah, okay. So people who have accepted Islam uh, have found that they feel more alive. And that is 100% in, in line with the idea of uh, life having more meaning. Now people might say you can have your own meaning, you can create your own meaning. First of all, you didn't create yourself, so you can't create your own meaning. Like a remote control, it doesn't decide its own meaning, right? Uh, the, the creator decides the meaning because the creator designs you and gives you your function if that makes any sense if you consider yourself a very high-tech robot you will have a function and you're best suited to a certain purpose according to that design and we are not very good at knowing exactly what that design is. For to know exactly what that design is, uh, you'd have to know everything about psychology and biology to perfection. Does that make any sense? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's um, it's an interesting line of thought. With that um, with that line of thought, if say you compare human to sort of like remote control in the sense that is made by the creator and then the function is also made by the creator then i guess that sort of led me to think what do you think about free will do you think that's uh, like humans actually have free will uh yes humans have free will that's a whole big discussion because yeah, i know a lot of an open that's a very open question but yeah no it's fine it's a it's fine discussion and um because i'm gonna make the video really short i'll say yes you have free will but very few people exercise it because they like copying other people does that make any sense yeah and influenced by the societies in which we live in and i guess that's sort of copying what you see and what you are engulfed in um, yeah in a sense yeah um it's an interesting one. I'm not. I'm not so sure we do have free will. I think there's a little bit more of the reactions that are happening in our brain that are sort of, in reality, what actual decision do we have to make about how we feel about a certain thing? Or even now, when I'm speaking, the words that are coming out, am I really deciding to say them before I process them in my brain? I don't know. It's, uh... Sure. I think this kind of leads into the other reason why we need to, if we have a very clear idea of who God is and what God is instructing us. Because I hear a lot of 
different ideas then they're kind of like in 100 different directions right and so the three things that I've uh, got from people who believe in God and this is from the experience of all sorts of other commentators who are not even believers in God but they look at believers in God and they go wow they have all these things one is uh, a purpose a very clear purpose and direction they don't suffer so much from what well, very little depending on how strong their belief is uh, from um, existential angst like anxiety from which direction to go in life and things like that because especially this coming back to especially Muslims and this is something uh, do you know Joe Rogan yeah right so he's been he's a big fan of UFC fighting and you I don't know if you know I don't know much about it but I know that basically Muslims are dominating it and he's really impressed by he's an atheist himself but he's very impressed by people especially Muslims they pray five times a day. this is kind of copying some of his words like that you don't see any other religious group as committed to their beliefs that's why most of this place is run by Muslims basically if you look around right uh, because they're the most they believe in their belief more than anybody else they the more committed this practically they follow it the most right so in sort of in paraphrasing Joe Rogan he's a sort of an outsider he's like he's looking at these committed Muslims who are praying five times a day and they can they have his words he say they are on a path and this is what Muslims always pray for every day they say guide us on a straight path have a great great go on a straight direction so their path their purpose and they feel more alive and I think I'm not sure how much I've talked about feeling more alive but if you have if you think if you're an atheist, a strict atheist, which you're not, you're, uh, you're searching, let's say, right? Then you believe in something called nihilism. Nihilism, you might have heard of, means like there is no, everything's an accident. If everything's an accident, there can't be a direction or a purpose. It's just accidental because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There's no design, right? So you have that. And practically, when I talk to atheists, I find them far more depressed and far more confused, okay, about direction in life uh, because clearly there can't be any direction in life if you think everything's an accident but if you realize there's a God then well wow, there's a path there's a direction you feel excited about life there's a reason for everything you're doing and God makes it really clear how you can grow as well and really enjoy life like I I enjoy life and some people look at some of the hardships in my life and they go how can you be so happy and it's like I'm so happy because I'm learning from that and I I know where I'm going and everything there's no accidents there's just the illusion of coincidence but it is, it's everything's by purpose and God's 100% orchestrating it that's how I see it and that's how I experience it any thoughts about it because I'm doing a lot of talking um, yeah I think you, you make some good points it's, I would say yes that time you take to internalize your thoughts and uh, I guess for some people it'd be sort of speaking to a higher being or for some people it's some other sort of rituals in, in terms of speaking to a spiritual world but that, that time to internally reflect on, on your soul I think is what keeps people moving on the path forward and, and generally being more in line and more happy cool. with life right yeah but yeah I wouldn't say it's necessarily uh, specific to a religion as such I mean as, as you say with uh, Islam it's, it's quite a dedicated religion as you'd say so it's it's I understand why that's you know, the case where you made the point earlier so. yeah I would compare Islam to other religions like Islam is black and white you got to do this this and the other most Christians uh, have this idea just believe and that's it and but it's so it's like um, a self-help book Islam is like a packed self-help book. You've got to do this, black and white, millions of things you've got to do, right? Christianity is just belief. It's like an empty self-help book, right? And Buddhism, it's a lot of airy-fairy. I, I, by the way, as a Muslim, I don't know if you know this, I have to believe in the origins of all these religions. So I believe in Buddhism as a religion from God originally, but it's been a lot of things have been done to it so most of the I, I'm gonna I'm trying to not go into different ideas actually I'm just not even gonna touch that actually because it's another whole can of worms let's say right so uh, I believe in all those origins but they're, they're nothing compared to Islam Islam is clear-cut this is what you got to do uh, Christianity do whatever you want uh, Buddhism it's actually been taken over by Westerners so if you uh, all I say is if you ever see a clip um, uh, on you know 
those little phrases of like a Buddhist quote, that's not even Buddha because Buddha is really complicated when he talks. It's the Westerners who are just making like uh, catchy phrases. Do check it out. Like it's very easy to do. So basically all these other regions aren't working. All their populations are dying out. Only the Muslim populations are growing. I don't know if you know that. Uh, have you heard of that? Like, uh, I think the, I've heard something along those lines before. Right? Yeah. And that's a def that's a evidence that um, the religion is working. It's kind of like the, what is the, the phrase? Um, proof is uh, in the eating or the pudding, whatever. How, how does the phrase go? Do you know the phrase? Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, like, you can have all sorts of claims and beliefs, right? But Islam has such a strong family structure because it's black and white that it works and everything else is failing, right? And we can check the statistics. Do check it out. Talk in the co Join me in the comments and always responding, right? Um, so there's all sorts of, like, these amazing benefits. So I want to I want to split them into three benefits. I've already basically talked about one is you get a meaning and a direction, feel alive because you know life has a purpose. Number two is got happiness values, basically, if I summarize them. Like, it's the clear cut. So believing in God and believing in Islam, I can consider them synonymous, right? I don't think the other one's really... Anyway, I won't go into that. <laughs> um, and then finally, we are naturally attracted to God. Now, a lot of people don't realize that either. They think that's a bit strange. But there's, a two, let's say, two different kinds of tests we can do on that, just to keep it simple. One is, did you know psychologists say the most powerful antidepressant, do you know what the most powerful antidepressant is? Non-chemical, non-big pharma uh, antidepressant. Uh no, uh, Standing in nature, being in nature. Yeah, that's, All right? that's interesting, yeah. Okay, now what's that got to do with God? Now, if you, I don't know, do you immediately connect that being anything to do with God? Uh, I think there's a, yeah, a certain um, element of um, spiritual power you get by being in something which connects to the ground in which, I mean, we're all connected from the same source, essentially. And so being in that place which has not been molded by humans is certainly a way of connecting to a different different level i think so yeah i'd say, I'd say so. cool yeah so we see the quran describes the universe as a palace a glass palace under which god is the rushing power like this stream right so we see we look at a tree but in fact we're we're really looking at god in a way right the power of god not literally god right um and that we, in a way we have to try to make sense why do we look at a tree or a leaf or anything like that which is you could say is just a physical thing why does that somehow why are scientists realizing that that has such a powerful effect on us so we have to think about what is that and I think you kind of alluded to the fact that you kind of see the see you kind of see the connection between the creation and the creator let's say right yeah that's one thing and there's another test with the quran suggests so simply thinking about god has the same effect of like being in nature he says uh, the quran says it's, it is in the heart is it in the is it is in the remembrance of god that hearts can find comfort so it's another test. It's basically the comfort that you find being in nature. You're sort of effectively remembering God by looking in nature. Okay. So three elements of why, which is you have find purpose, you have values, and we have a natural connection to God. So now I want to quickly go into before I go into three kinds of proofs, uh, three reasons why people don't believe in God and why they're mistakes okay one is they meet bad people who are religious see if there's a person who's bad and believe uh, believes in water that doesn't mean water stops existing do you know what i mean we shouldn't connect the two even though if they're bad people some people are bad like for example there's a pedophile priest right i don't believe in christianity but he's religious that pedophile priest that doesn't stop God from existing because there are some bad people. There are also good people as well, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so that's one. And then there's bad religion. So when I say bad religion, for example, uh, Christianity in the beginning of the Bible says the universe was literally created in seven, six days. And there was a sunrise and sunset and all sorts of crazy things even before the sun existed. So it just doesn't add up. And the earth was the first thing that to be created. And the earth is the center of the universe. And all sorts of things that don't add up. By the way, Islam doesn't say any of that. Believes in the Big Bang. There's a literal verse in the Holy Quran that says, um, 
we the whole universe was in a closed up mass and then it expanded and that sounds obvious to us in a way now maybe it didn't. there's a lot of flat earthers here as well right but um that was a um, basically a massive idea like einstein didn't even want to believe in it it was so shocking right this is only 50 70 years years ago right stephen hawking says that was a, like the great one of the greatest uh findings of the 20th century that the big bang right and islam had it already and there's so many proofs like that um i don't know where i've got that was supposed to be part three and i don't know how i've got into that that was kind of like one of the kinds of proofs um so i was saying uh yes i was saying bad people bad religion uh these are things that pick people off but one of the biggest things is openly lying so that's this is i'm trying to refer to verse of the holy quran that basically say i think there's a verse of the holy quran that says you were just uh, effectively a sperm and now you've developed into a human being you think you're so great that you, know, you can openly lie against the existence of god meaning you can openly deny the blatant proofs and this is what i'm going to demonstrate in a minute not through you but a lot of people do this um that they like let's say there's two things one is 99 percent chance that is true and the other one is one let's just say 99 percent chance god exists and one percent chance god doesn't exist actually that's not even correct by the way i'm going to go into that in a bit but people go you know what but maybe the one percent is true you're an open liar in that sense because you don't do that in the rest of your life does that make any sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. So now let's quickly get to the proofs, and I'm going to go back to the thing I just said, actually. So, um, so the the thing about complexity, very simple idea, but people don't understand how complex nature is. Uh, so, if you look, just to give an example, and this is an example of have you heard of Richard Dawkins? Yeah. Yeah, arch atheist. For people who don't know, um, he brought up the idea of hemoglobin. He said, "Oh, hemoglobin could have been made by accident," and he went through some of the numbers. And most people don't. Uh, and hemoglobin, just like just another part of nature, right? So this is one example of many, many examples you could pick up, right? So if you do the numbers and the numbers are not actually that complicated i'm a math teacher gcse math you could do this right if you had the relevant facts okay um he said effectively to make hemoglobin just in just in case you don't know what hemoglobin is i'm just going to turn the get even a better shot of you uh hopefully you won't get straight into the sun but anyway um hemoglobin is the bit that basically makes blood red okay but it does more than this makes blood red it's a very complicated little structure that enables oxygen to be carried very nicely our, our bodies are just mind-bogglingly amazing right um for that to be created by a series of accidents uh he says because he cheated basically there's four strands of let's say i can't remember what they are um strands of chemicals let's just say right of, of enzymes to be a bit more accurate uh the the chance of one of those being created by a series of accidents is 10 to the, one divided by 10 to the power of, oh, 128 or something like that right um but if you have all four strands it'll be over one divided by 10 to the power 700 now if you don't like numbers basically the probability of one of these little hemoglobin things and you need about 500 million for of them to make a pin sized drop of blood by the way like blood literally standing on their head pin head right so basically no blood right i need so just one of these um it's 0.00, .00 with 700 zeros right basically no chance you got more chance of dying crossing that road like a trillion trillion times more chance crossing that road than one of these being made by accident people have no idea so like scale it up to a human being there's basically no chance right so it comes to back to probabilities simple probabilities um you either believe humans were made by accident which is no chance or you believe that there was an intelligence and that's our experience if you look at the phone you know there was an intelligence that was that created it right even if you didn't see the creator um that's our normal experience and that's the most probable one um so what's your thoughts about that i do a ton of talking any thoughts um 
I think the probabilities sort of um, line of thought. Um, I I don't know if I'm. Uh, I understand what sort of where you're coming from in terms of the probability of the, us existing in this very moment is just some unbelievably small. But uh, I also have sort of dabbled in the idea of um, multiverse theories and things like that, and I don't know how that fits into this sort of um, into Islam or any other. So the idea of multiverse, I mean, that is, that fits into Islam in the sense that God says the whole universe will be wrapped up like a scroll and then it will be created again. So maybe that's not multiverse, but basically rebirth. lots of universe rebirths, right? Um, I'm not sure if multiverse fits into the Quran. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Um, so you, but the reason why you bring that, I'm guessing, is that it might, if there's lots of universe or millions of universe, maybe it increases the probability of random stuff happening. Well, if there's an unlimited number of universes where every possibility comes to fruition, then it sort of opens another can of worms. Yeah, sure. Way. Okay. So one thing is just to put that um, those numbers I said into perspective, and hopefully you don't get put off by the word numbers. Okay, because some people hate maths. I'm a math teacher. I'm, I have a lot of experience with I math haters. Math at uni, so there you go. I'm oh, fantastic! So you it, you yeah. understand ten to the power seven hundred to some extent. You can't imagine it, but you understand it. Okay. Um, so. The, the number of atoms in the universe, do you want to guess? Make it fun. Oh. Um, 300 trillion trillion. Nowhere close. 10 to the power 80. 10 to the power 80. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. Yeah, trillion trillion. So a trillion is nine zeros. Maybe a trillion trillion would be maybe 18 zeros or something. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So the 10 to the power 700 is... I don't know. You could say infinitely bigger than the number of atoms in the universe, right? So if every nanosecond there were the, these hemoglobin somehow evolved, which they can't in space, and we just they'll be killed. Like if you go in space, you'd be dead, right? Okay. So, but being nice and let 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 evolution begin from the Big Bang, right? If you did it every nanosecond, you wouldn't have enough time. So it just doesn't add up. The math doesn't add up, right? So then we just kind of logically have to believe in God. And also, just to kind of... I, I try to say less, believe it or not, okay? But um, people have the... Uh, uh, by the way, I should have said, I believe in evolution. No problem. Evolution, there's, there's two... Let's say two categories of evolution. One is that you think evolution is accidental. There's evidence that it's not. The more we develop science, the more we realize... The more myths that we have to break. There's a great myth to uh, enable people to believe in atheism, because that's definitely a religion, right? Uh, a religion in the most unrealistic ideas, probably mathematically, that's what that is, right? And even scientists can be unreasonable, they're only human beings, so there are some of the greatest scientists are believing in God anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so what was I saying? The. So, let me, okay, first of all, like plants, they've looked, they realize that plants, when they mutate, not all of their DNA gets, uh, is like, uh, changes. There are core parts of their DNA that remain. So maybe I'll put a whole bunch of links for this kind of information. There's nothing random in the, the mutations. They're carefully selected. The parts that could be, you, you were useful to be changed, are but the let's say the key functions that's what i read the key functions don't run they don't they don't even change and that makes sense so, so it's carefully selected what is, so is that information gained from looking at what has survived throughout history as in what has thrived and mutated and carried no on. so they're, they're they're looking at plants and what parts of the dna are changed and what parts do not Okay, and all I'm saying is not randomly mutated, it's carefully mutated. I, um, from what knowledge I have of evolution, which I have to admit is not extensive, I would have thought there would have been some space for the, some sort of mutations which were essentially not um, beneficial for the plant or animal or whatever. And these, you know, throughout history would not have continued. So I'm not sure that's entirely a valid point in the sense that you could have had mutations which were, let's say, not carefully selected. 
uh, which did not carry on. But then again, if you ask yourself that, like, uh, what's, what's stopping, you know, there's no, nothing to say that that's not a, a creator's, you know, design, that, that mutation doesn't move on forward. So it's kind of a, not a circular argument, but it's, uh, these things fall in together. I get what you're saying. It could have been either way, let's say, let's say. And so kind of, maybe I should have said this one, the, the other point, this other point I'm going to say now first or earlier. Um, so I don't know if you've heard of the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, I have. I don't remember what it is. Okay. But... I mean, basically, it's the idea of entropy, right? Which means things naturally become disorganized. And that makes sense. That's our common experience. If you have a sand castle, you make it very nicely. You come back next week. You don't expect it to become a big, bigger sand castle or a better one. It become worse okay naturally right um so that's essentially thermodynamics it makes sense that there are more ways of being disorganized than organized so the idea and this is a big lie that's to confuse people that evolution naturally by random processes naturally creates more things that's the opposite of our own experience and it's the opposite of so it's the opposite of actual science so this is the second law of thermodynamics. It's a law. Law means higher than hypothesis, for example. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Um, I think uh, this, I don't know where this conversation is going. Okay. So where I'm going is, so we were, there's three kind of areas of proof. Okay. And one was complexity. And to summarize, because other people might be confused as well. Um, it's like, first of all, mathematically, there's not enough time for anything to accidentally evolve, even a pin drop of blood, right? Never mind a whole human, never mind a whole ecosystem, all this kind of stuff. That's one. And then the idea that things naturally fall into place is the opposite of our experience and the opposite of science. And you might say, oh, science says evolution means that things happen accidentally. Actually, no. It's counter everything we know about science. There's no accidents in science. Mutation shouldn't be accidental because nothing in biology, which are the most high-tech robots, in, even a cell is more high-tech, even a fly is more high-tech than anything any scientist can make, right? So there's no accidental element to organism, never mind their reproduction, which is a very... Would you, would you agree that reproduction or continuation of the species is pretty important for an organism? Of course, yeah. Right? So they're not going to leave it to chance. Like, the rest of the organism works like clockwork. Why would the reproduction bit be random? It doesn't make sense. It makes sense that it'll be organized and well chosen, whatever. They, it, well planned, let's say. So every element of it, um, it just doesn't make sense to believe this. Anything in, in it is random. That's what I'm kind of getting. But I kind of want to move on. We kind of agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're you're not away. It's food yeah. for thought. I'm, uh, I'm running Yeah, and you don't have to 100% agree yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because that would take forever and it's very boring. One of my principles is I just share information, food for thought. And like, I want you to become a Muslim. There's no doubt about it. You I, have no I problem. I don't doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it often takes about seven years, apparently. So just I'm, uh, I'm, if uh, I'm uh, one step on the way, that's great. I'm looking at, well, I'm not looking around because that sounds a bit funny, but I'm. Uh, I'm uh, looking into my own spirituality and finding my own way, you know, to be as happy as I can, really. I think that, yeah, just going back to the point of, um, uh, you know, taking it way back to when you're saying that Islam is one of the most dedicated religions in terms of its spray and its sort of structured beliefs. I don't think it's necessarily something which, as a human, we are sort of... Uh, meant to understand in some ways like we're never going to fully understand exactly what we are doing here or why why we come to this point and so i think personally that it doesn't really matter what kind of religion you find yourself believing in if you as i say have that time to sort of almost accept what you are doing in your life and understanding your own path forward and that be maybe through a spiritual sort of feeling and, and you may have some you know I think these these religions sort of guide you in a direction but I, I, you know it, to say it's encompassed in one singular book it, I don't think is you know is the sure whole sure I mean I mean all I'll say is now uh, people are truly suffering people 
Uh, get the, the most popular way to die, I shouldn't say it like that maybe, uh, for young men especially in the West is suicide, which is incredibly sad. Okay, So there are real world consequences and I, I think it 100% matters which guide for life you pick. Uh, if you had the best guide for life, you'd just pick that. I think that makes sense, right? That's uh, all yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think as it goes, like, lots of people don't have the time to really think about this sort of thing yeah. on the day to day. So having a strong and um, structured guide, yeah, no doubt about it. That's the way, that's the way to sort of make yourself grow. Cool. Life. And so uh, I'm just going to quickly go to the other two proofs uh, of the existence of God. One is the Quranic proof. The Quran itself, the, which is online, I put lots of links and all that kind of stuff. You can get on the Quran anywhere, anytime for free. Um, it's a miracle and it's God saying, like, here I am. Like, here are loads of facts that we know in science now that can't have been known otherwise. Okay, just uh, just a couple, but there's so many all over YouTube and I don't want to make this video long. Okay, one is I talked about uh, the Big Bang mentioned in the Quran, right? You can check it out. Some people go, oh, you're saying it out of context. Do you check it out yourself. It's all free for you to check it out yourself. Um, it says all living things are made from water. Oh, we know that now. Oh, we even look, when we look at Mars, we look for water. We don't actually look for the real thing, right? We don't look for the aliens directly. Um, uh, and all sorts of weird things. Like, okay, I'll tell you another one. Just, just the last one for now. It's the number of water times mentioned, number of times water is mentioned versus compared to the number number of times um, land is mentioned is the exact ratio of the amount of land and water on earth. Interesting, isn't it? I didn't know that, but yeah. <laughs> Just check it out again. You can, I mean, I, I had to check it out. I was like, okay, sometimes these YouTube videos, I don't trust them, right? There's a Wikipedia page of all the references of where land and water is mentioned. And you can Google it. I mean, Google it. And there's, uh, you can literally search the Quran, by the way, for words and stuff like that. It's, you could do the research, check to verify this yourself, right? So I always try to pick simple things that people can verify themselves, right? So the Quran is evident and the, the Quran, God just wants to, to make it really simple for people to know which way to go. So God just like throws in all these amazing ideas and then says, I'm God, this is what you need to do. This is going to make you happier. It's going to work. You can test it out in your life, blah, 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 right? And the last one is God is not some dead skeleton on the side for you to intellectually find God. God will show you, you himself if you ask, right? So, but this is, the, this is the kind of rule God gives. He said, oh, my servants. So a servant is not somebody who's like bossing God around. You're, 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 you're willing to be bossed around by God, okay? If you truly are looking for it, I will answer your prayers. And I will guide you. That's in the Quran. I'll put another reference for that, right? Yeah. So, God doesn't need us to intellectually find God as if God is some skeleton in some closet somewhere that we've been waiting to be looked for. This God, the all powerful, the all living, alive today, will talk to you, communicate with you today. I, that's a normal part of my experience. Even Christians have that experience, right? So, I don't, I'm, I don't believe it's just an exclusive thing. God wants to guide everybody. Right, uh, people who don't even know about Islam, or maybe they think Islam is terrorism or something. So you don't have to be a Muslim to be guided or by God. We're all children of God, right? So that's the three proofs. I think I'm done, really. Yeah, I was uh, got trying to catch things. So. Yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you so much. I really uh, no appreciate it, man. It's an interesting yeah. conversation. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you uh, my business card and my stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, awesome. Thanks very much.